Hello, good evening and welcome to the Little Farmer's Farm. This video is actually the second video that we've uploaded today. The first one was where we were, um, it's a cracker as well. We, we were putting in uh, raised beds, planting beds inside the tiki tunnel, leveled it off first, weed membraned it, put the, um, the raised bed planters on, which we create in that video, the last video, painted them, fill them with the compost and the mix that we're going to be using for the uh, peppers, tomatoes and cucumbers that we're going to be bedding in there into the tiki tunnel which is a trampoline framed um, grow tunnel, poly grow tunnel but first we see the wise old elf now this, uh, the reason I didn't put it in the other video is because the other video was going to be too long anyway and I wanted to focus on the um, the sort of charity work that we do in the second half of the of, of the previous video, uh, where we're um, we're building a um, a vegetable garden for uh, for some kids that need it. They need love those kids, and they need fresh vegetables and something to do as well. So it's a project that we're go we're going to be carrying on with that as the weeks go forward and the years go forward, probably. We'll take a look at this one because we're seeing the, the wise old elf is giving us tips on leeks and other gardening projects. Um, so yeah, enjoy. Catch you in a bit. See you later. So there's lots and lots and lots to do today, boys and girls, on the Sunday. <clears throat> the first Sunday of, uh, of May. It's a beautiful, beautiful morning. I just pop down now. Um, a bit dark there. Uh, yeah, so it's a beautiful morning, but there's lots to do, and uh, we're going to be cracking on with it today. Got four hours all together with the two plots that we've got. That's the time allocation that the allotment um, committee allows. I'm being beckoned by an elf. Stay in the garden for your health, but let's go see the wise old elf. All right, see you in a bit. What's happening, Joe? Oh, right. Let's go and see him. Get his leaks in. Hiya, pal. All right. How's it going? That fantastic, beautiful today, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely lovely today. Right, muscle burr leaks. Grown at home. Yeah. Yep. So now they're probably five weeks old, six weeks old. So they're all tall and leggy. So all we're going to do is give it a hurkle. Right. So now they're all only that size. Is that so they grow uniformly like that? More or less, Tony, yeah. And then, just the case, tease apart. And that doesn't affect the growth then. So I suppose it'll encourage, excuse me, encourage the growth really, That's wouldn't the it? Idea, Tony. Yeah. And because it, it the soil's warm and damp, because it will had a decent amount of rain this week, so the ground is nice and warm and damp. Nothing clever. Six inches apart. Dig a little hole. Poke it down. So that's all you do with them? Uh, all you, know. you do with links. Nothing clever. You don't need air levels for this. <laughs> How many will you get in there then? About 100 I'll bet, won't you? Probably Tony, yeah. What's going further on then, Joe? What's going on in the, the further bed? Is it all going to be leaks? Or are you going to... It's all going to be leaks, but if I get up there now... I don't know if you would, if I would be too close, but I've just started here, and that's it. Right. So it's one, two, three, four, five. So we've got there's thirty in now. About how long do they take to mature to to be a, a harvestable? I suppose you can harvest them any time, can't you? You can but... harvest them any time if you leave them till late on in the season. They'll be quite fat and chunky, yeah. 
Because they do take a while, they take a while, don't they, the leaks? They take a while, so minimum of three months now. And it depends how you want them. If you want big fat leaks, uh, leave them till later on in the year. But we like them not too fat. Now you make loads of leaking potatoes through your food. Which is excellent, yeah. Which is excellent. So all we'll do, drop them in the holes, leave the hole open. And the idea being then, the root is here, the root's down the bottom, and when it rains, or I'll get the watering can after and give them the first grade, as the water hits the edges of the hole, it'll slowly, some of the soil will go down on top of the root. Yeah. And it's nice and cool and damp down there. And I'll keep my eye on them for just probably a month, once a week, see how they're looking. Gentle water with a watering can, and away we go. That's good. Do you do you blanch them? Do you put like collars around them or anything, or just leave them like just that? Leave them as they are, Tony. Yeah, because you don't need it all to be white. The the, the, the green's probably more um, health beneficial than the white, I would guess, wouldn't it? Because of the yeah, because the guys who were dead keen, like the pro growers, who grow them and show them, they'll get piece of waste pipe that you might have outside your back kitchen sink where your water goes down to your yeah. drain and they'll cut six or eight inch length and once they get to a reasonable size then once they're established if you put a collar over that everything that was inside because it's getting no daylight gets blanched would stay white it's blanched yeah that's how they do it, and I think the lad uh, who was next to Steve Piper, he he did uh, he yeah. did that, didn't he? And then and then neglected them. <laughs> but again, it's all about just continuity all the time. It's looking lush now. It's starting to get full, isn't it? All the all the garden. Yeah, because as I said before, I put three peas in a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, there in that tent, yeah. back to back with the black shed of ours. Yeah. Not tent, but the the, the climber there. But, but we're this season, for whatever reason, we're having more bloody wood pigeons than ever. And normally wood pigeons don't touch the sweet peas. But, again, they're young and green. The birds don't know what they are. But again, they all have chicks. They want feeding. They come to the supermarket. Yeah. And uh, if it's young and green, this is a 24 hour shopping mile down here, isn't it? So For the pigeons. I don't know what you can see, but all I've done that's my sweet pea frame. The peas are in the middle because I've had to go round with the net all the way round. Cane toppers again. They're coming in, undergoing, and they're eating my sweet peas. Yeah. So that's, the buggers, aren't they? Yeah, that's to protect the sweet peas. They're for flowers for home. Yeah. For later on in the year. So were they uh, the, the seed packets that you would buy from the supermarket? I think you might have to speak up a little bit, mate, because we've no, we've no microphone, have we? All right. These are your natural wild sweet peas. All oh, right, wild peas, yeah. yeah. Natural, natural sweet peas. Now they'll they'll all be the same flower, and it'll have a little tiny purple flower on. But from that way back, whenever people started playing around with it to give us all the sweet pea varieties and types that we've got now. So that would have been the original natural the original, cultivar, if you yeah. like. And that just comes up every year. Right. When it's finished flowering, I just chop it down to the ground, don't touch it, and it comes up again automatically the next year. So there's some here, and some coming through there. And have they been on since you started, then? Well, I brought those up from home. Right. Because I'd had some at home, and I just dug them out, put them in here, and they've come on a tree. And they've come on a tree. But they'll just have little pinkish flowers on, but all one colour. We'll do a catch up with them. So eh? them's, them's your natural sweet peas. It's all coming through, Luke. 
Once all the restrictions are lifted, we're going to do a monthly episode on the... Yeah, but it's just catch up, it's a bit. So I'm going to get the leaks in now, and that's me done today. Right. So I'm going to take some rhubarb home. Rhubarb crumble? Whatever Margie makes, we eat. So if she says she wants rhubarb, and I'll take a bit from my mum as well. Yeah. But the girls can have rhubarb, and I'm just plodding off. I'll have to check mine. I think mine's coming on all right now. Yeah. Well, there you go. Rivendell, this one. Nice young Kingdom of the Elves. Oh, look at the redness on that. Yeah, that's a nice colour, isn't it? So, take a load home with me. Leaves are poisonous. No good to you. They get cut off. Just drop it in the compost bin. You can you do a liquid feed with it, same as the comfrey, but it does it, it stinks like the comfrey stinks. Yeah, but it's very very weak. Is it not as strong? We won't be as strong as the comfrey. Yeah. And the uh, the green bottles like it and all that. Yeah. So you just chuck it in there in the compost. Yeah, yeah. I just put it in the compost bin. Yeah, quite very wise. And I've done my heads this week. If you scan down, nice neat heads all the way down. Yeah, me and Mick are doing ours now. Yeah, because it's a. It's a bit of a pain in the bum, but just bring the generator up. Bob's your uncle. Get it fired up, put the lecker hedge trimmers on, and then it's like three hours of a job. All down the length and then all down the width of two plots. Yeah, you've even done a bit of, what do they call it, topery there, haven't you? That's just the way it looked out, Tom. It wasn't never meant to be like that. But, but when I just got this bit, this was thicker. And all this, right? So I just made it into a not a tall parade, but it's a bit like a like a, a wall in it, yeah, like a castle, like a battlement. Like a battlement. Oh, it's looking great, mate. Yeah, the spelly here, there going across the apple. Are they then? The first one nearest to us is my plum, right? There's an apple behind it, and then over there is a plum and another apple, so they've all. They've all blossomed, the blossoms all fell off. Luckily we've had no frost. Yeah. So the frost hasn't got at the blossom. So hopefully, yeah. You'll get plenty of fruit. We should get a better crop of fruit this year than last year. Yeah, because last year was pretty poor, wasn't it? My, mine were awful last yeah. year. I didn't get a single plum, I don't think, last year, but on the plum tree there, fingers crossed, if we keep that frost off, we'll get a good crop off that well, should be. Over the garden fence. Over the garden fence. These were the raspberries that were just down to the ground. Yeah? Yeah. So they're all shooting up now. So again, in the next week, I'll just run a string line all the way around the edge just to contain them and keep them all in. Yeah. Yeah. And but then they'll just grow up in a big block, won't they, yeah, I guess? Every then, now and again, they send runners out. And this is the strawberry bed, but here's a raspberry that's come from here. Yeah. So it's sent to run it out under the ground and here's a raspberry. Well you give you give us one for Helen, didn't you, the other the other day? Yeah. If you get an ill like that, Pa, we'll have them definitely yeah, if you they can pull all them. Get pulled out. Yeah, because you want to keep it in, in its own little yeah. and I don't want space, don't you? I just want them here. And they are invasive, aren't they, once yeah. you once you get going with them. And again, these are the, the late one. Autumn treasure, September, October. It'll be five, six foot high, and we'll have a fabulous glut of raspberries. The fattens them as big ones, aren't they? Then. Yeah. What they are. Very good, mate. Well, I'm going to carry on with those leaks, and that'll be me done. Yeah, sound. Well, I'll come back when you're watering them up and have a quick minute. Okay, no problem. See you in a bit. We'll have a brew and what have you after. Cheers, Joe. It's a last bit of quick. Hello. Hi, so we're back on again. He just planted them all in, and how many did we say? 144 leeks we've got. 144 leeks. 24 rows of six. Any math mathematicians out there will tell us if we're wrong. So all we're going to do now... I'll just get round. Look at that, that great line in there. Woo! Yeah. Wish I could get in there. 
again. Never rocket science, it's a hole poke round, which you can probably see. Yeah. Drop the leak in. And then the idea being now then, that as you water, the water will wash a little bit of the soil down the hole. And that will just cover the roots. That's a pretty fine rose that, isn't it? Yeah. But just give them a, a drink. Just to get them going. And what that does is it's emulating a shower, isn't it? Like yeah. a shower of rain coming down. Well, it's just a gentle, gentle water. And as the water is falling in the hole, it's taking a little bit of the soil from the edge. So that's going to cover the roots. And then as I've been going along, whatever weeds was in, I've ju just chucked on either side of the path. But because it's a six inch gap between the rows and a six inch gap in the row, later on when the weeds start coming, be with me, yeah. which will invariably happen. But I've got an old garden hole in there that I've cut down and just made it like four inches wide. Be with me. We had a terrible day yesterday, boys and girls. For uh, sugar stealers, which are the seeds of the dandelion plant, don't we? Yeah. And I've never, it's unprecedented. If you look there, it looks like we've had a bit of snowfall. Yeah. Mine, we're all the same, it's gone on everybody's plots. So we'll have to be vigilant, but later on, as the weeds start coming, because there's six inch between each plant, in the row, so there's six across, and there's a six inch gap between the rows. So later on, the hole that I use is only about three inches wide, but it's narrow enough then to go in between the rows and not disturb the leaks. And what does the hole do? I know, but these lot might not do. It's essentially chopping the heads off, isn't it? So, yeah, you just all you're doing is chopping the heads off the leaves, and if it's a dry day. Just pause you for a minute. Hole. Was a conventional hole. In as much as it was about six inches wide. Right. So I've just got the angle grinder, cut it down, and it's now two and a half, three inches. Ah. Right, so then here's all the weeds. All you're doing is forward and back. So you're taking the top off the weed. And because, as I've always said, my beds are roughly four foot wide. When you're going through, I'm not disturbing the plant. And you take the heads off the weed, forward and back. Because using the conventional hoe, if you haven't spaced it properly like you have, you, you have a really good chance of actually hitting the plants that you're growing That's and right. killing them off rather than the weeds. So all we're doing... That's a better idea, isn't it? And all it is is just the hole that's been cut down and you can get relatively close in. How do you sharpen it? I've just got a light load of us have a little six inch angle grinder at home. Yeah. Right? And every now and again, I take everything home, get the angle grinder, seconds of a job, and it just keeps that edge. Brilliant. But all I'm doing, and if it's going to be dry today, all the weeds that we've disturbed, we're going to cut the head off going forward, yeah? And then we just move the soil around as we're coming back. So you chop them off and bury them again, do you? Yeah. And anything that's left on top on a dry day... Dries out and dies and doesn't come back. So going back to the leeks or the onions or whatever, this is just an ideal size now and it doesn't take, because all the beds are the same, are you with me? Yep. It's about a 15 minute job, if we do a 20 minute job or something, do all the beds, right? Yeah, so one bed, 15, 20 minutes and because they're not overly wide, you come around the other side and you're not bent over, you're not hurting your back, straining yourself. 
Yeah, you keep it a decent posture. Yeah. Into the middle again. Spot the weed. Again, it's not rocket science. I'm going to do that with that hole that I've got because I'm bending over me on my hands and knees, pulling about me with my yeah. fingers. Me half the time it takes forever. And uh... and then as daft as it sounds, I've got another hole. Yeah, and I cut the handle down to halfway. Yeah. Are you with me? So my other hole is only this length. And the reason it's only this length is, when I do my beds, that's netted over, because I'm, you might have whatever out of sight. I get you. And again, it's daft. I just, and the beds are all four foot wide. And 10 minutes of, does all your weeds. Fantastic stuff. And there's the there's the collars on. Yeah, the brassica collars on. That's just to keep away the cabbage root fly. Yep. Because the root fly will come in, tiny little thing. It can get through this, but it'll lay its eggs on the base of the plant, just above the ground. And when the eggs hatch, yeah, the little rascals then, yeah, they'll start eating the roots of the plant. They, they burrow down, don't they, and get yeah, to the roots. Yeah. And then people wonder why everything's falling over, looking pale, one or two leaves are going off. But that is cabbage root fly. Nice one, pal. So that's us. That's us for the day. A quick catch up with a wise one. And away we go. That's it. Belting, Joe. Thanks very much, catch mate. Catch some more. Stay safe. Stay healthy, keep your social distances, social distances. <laughs> and get out in this free vitamin D. Dr. John recommends free vitamin D from the sun. There's been studies by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that says vitamin D reduces your chances of respiratory virus and bacterial infection by up to 90%. So this is the very best place to be, in it, Joe? It is, and if it's going to keep away the COVID, because we're out in the fresh air, getting tanned and... Getting the tan. Getting the vitamin D. We'll all be naked gardening, won't we, next week? Well, I'd, I'd all look good naked, Tony, but uh, <laughs> some, some young lady might think different. Well, there you go. Opinions are all varied, aren't they? Well, they could form a few, and then I could take the pick. <laughs> See you later, pal. I love Joe Lowe, the wise old elf, and so do many of you. He's a wealth of knowledge, and you won't go far wrong if you listen to Joe, which we do. So, uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed that. If you did like it, don't forget to uh, hit the like button. Subscribe if, you, subscribe if you're not a subscriber. Leave a comment. And also, if you are a subscriber, don't forget to hit the notification bell. If you hit the notification no, notification bell icon, which is below the um, the video, you get to see the uploads as they're coming through, so you never miss an episode of it. And you can comment, like, subscribe, do whatever you want to it, gain the knowledge. This is the growing revolution. So we're trying to, with these vlogs that we're doing, encourage everybody in the world to grow at least something for themselves that's organic, fresh and healthy. No better place than the allotment plots or your garden, your windowsill, your patio, whatever it might be. Whatever you've got space, grow in it. Grow your own. It's the way forward, boys and girls. Catch you later. Have a good week. This is Guru Mafinda. I don't see you through the week, I'll see you through the window. And uh, remember, keep growing with your head down and we love you all. Satty bye. Ta-da.